part of the Long Beach Public Library Studio, which is a makerspace inside the Long Beach Public Library. I oh, know it's giving me that zoom error. It's fine. This is fine. Um, I'm going to stop and restart the screen share. There may be a few technical difficulties here, but we'll persevere. Um, yeah, so we're the Long Beach Public Library, uh, specifically from the studio, which is a makerspace inside the Long Beach Public Library. Um, we are most of us studio guides. Um, we are just two of a five person team that will be delivering this series of workshop lessons to you over the course of the next like 12 weeks. I don't know, there's six lessons spaced out. Um, I'm Emily. Uh, I am a writer, game designer, um, that's, yeah, love, love video games, dearly love video games, love making video games. Um, I was a founding member of the student-run game dev org at um, CSULB, ran the, the design team on that for like three years, um, and then have since been teaching game development to the studio. Uh, Gabe, do you want to do a little intro? On yourself? Yeah, hey everybody, my name is Gabriel. Yeah, I also work for the studio, part of the Long Beach Public Library. Um, I'm also an artist. I've done a few mur murals around the city um, and I like to make interactive art in, in all kinds of different ways. I'm part uh, a collaborator in the Space Time Collaborative and we make all kinds of interesting interactive things. Uh, one to note is a giant robotic drummer called the Box of Boom that you can play with using buttons and it plays all kinds of beats using like a uh, lot like drums and robot hands. It's really cool. Anyway, super excited here uh, to teach you all how to make your own interactive things, in this case, video games. Um, we have three other people who are not well, Richard's here, but he's not part of this lecture. Um, but you'll meet them over the course. We have Richard, Josh, and Chris, who will also be teaching you other things. Um, and yeah, in general, we're game developers and artists, um, and we're also teachers. Uh, on that note, we are always learning um, how to teach this stuff better. This is about our fourth iteration. Put a pin in that word. We'll talk more about that. But our fourth iteration of uh, this game dev lecture. Um, we think it's our best yet, but there's always stuff to improve. Um, so if you have suggestions or if stuff that we're doing is not working for you, we always really love to hear that because um, we're all kind of figuring this out together. So as some of you have said, we're going to be, or have seen, we're going to be using Google Classroom. Um, Gabe, would you like to share a quick uh, intro to how to use that? We're going to be updating it every lecture, um, but for now, we'd just like to get you guys started on it. You are muted, Gabe. I'm going to post the link one more time. And for those of you, can you hear me OK? Yes. OK, um, one second. And we know this might be overkill, but, but just bear with us. We really want to make sure that you guys are, are in here. And uh, yeah. good, because this is kind of going to be our hub for all of the different things that we'll be doing throughout this series. I'm going to turn okay. another light because I'm like, living in like a vampire cavern over here. OK, so um, you're, we're going to be using Google Classroom in this. And some of you have already used it in your school, right? Uh, if you've used Google Classroom in the past, go ahead and give me a thumbs up or just let me know in the chat, like, yep or yes. Um, OK. So if you're familiar with Google Classroom, um, once you click on the link and you log in, you're going to see the art of game dev. All our materials are going to be inside of classwork. So, so far, there's only one topic, which is today's class, Intro to Game Development. And as we go through this class, I'm gonna, we're going to periodically prompt you to go to some of these assignments or materials for you to look at, OK? Um, so we'll give you some time to get in there and do that, but that's pretty much it. Um, is there one in particular you want me to open up or? That's nope, we're good it. for now. Okay. All right, back to the presentation. All right, so all the business out of the way, not all of the business, but some of the business. What is a game? We're gonna be making games. We should probably know what they are. Who here plays games? Maybe? A little bit. 
And you can um, let us know in the chat too. Yeah, like tell us what you're playing. I am playing a lot of Animal Crossing um, and some Hades and the new World of Warcraft expansion comes out in like two weeks and I'm really jazzed about that. Let's see, I, I wish I could open chat. Um, Sometimes it opens. Us. So that? Um, somebody's playing Among Us. Erica's playing Ooh. Among Us and Roblox. Ooh, I've never played Roblox before. I've played Tyler's Among Us. Legends of Runeterra. Minecraft. Oh, I've heard of Runeterra. Yeah. Minecraft. We love Minecraft. Oh, Geshen, uh, Geshen Impact. <laughs> mm -hmm. GTA Modern Warfare. Legends awesome. of Runeterra. So it seems like we're playing a lot of different super variable games. What do these all have in common? Like all of them have different systems, have different, I don't know, they're in different worlds, they're different stories, they're different like feels. Um, what can we boil games down to at their very core? Well, I have this chart um, that I love uh, based off some lectures by Stone Lebrande, who is a very good game designer. Um, and all games, whether the Modern Warfare, Animal Crossing, Checkers, um, they can all be boiled down to these few elements, which are you have to have a player. Otherwise, it's, I don't know, what's the game for? It's just like an abstract thought. Um, and then you have to have a goal, something the player is trying to achieve. And in between the player and the goal is an opposition. I like to say the word challenge rather than opposition because I feel like opposition is very like fighty and I like games that aren't quite as fighty. Um, mm -hmm. But so yeah, so we have the player and we have the goal and then in between that is some kind of challenge. And the player has to overcome the challenge by making decisions, all within the rules, the parameters, the, the, the mechanics, if you will, um, that you set out as the game designer, as the game developer. What can games do that other mediums can't? Why are we making games? Why aren't we making movies or writing books or drawing comics? I mean, maybe you're doing all those other things, but right here we're making games. What can games do? Here's some, some suggestions, but does anyone have, I don't know, ideas? Uh, Nathan says, yeah, they're an interactive medium. Exactly. Art, interactive art medium. Exactly. So a lot of mediums are interactive to a degree, but really there's nothing that's quite as interactive as games do. When you're playing a game, um, you are not a passive audience member. You're not watching the art that someone else did. You are experiencing it. You are the one making the story go forward. Um, games are also, I don't want to say more, but games are also like uniquely very immersive. Because you are the one making the story go, you are the one, I don't know, causing things to happen. Those, those things that are happening feel much more immediate, much more tactile, much more personal. Um, and then there's also the element of agency, which uh, games aren't limited to a single course like a movie is. There's not necessarily a predetermined outcome. Your choices, choices or the decisions that the player makes matter and can affect the way that the story is told. Um, so all of these things add up to a very kind of like unique, very interactive, uh, very personal medium. So what is this crazy thing that we call game development? Obviously, it's making games, but what does that mean? What are all of the, the things that go into developing or making a game? One of the things that I love most about game development is that it is interdisciplinary. Um, so there's obviously, honestly, you could break this down to hundreds of different disciplines. Um, and at big studios, there are hundreds of different job titles that go into making a game. But for our purposes, we're breaking it down into four disciplines, um, which is to say game design, visual art, programming or computer science, and audio. So you are here. You're at, at this one, which is game design. Um, but over the course of this workshop, you will be going through all of these disciplines. Um, you'll be trying on all of these different roles. You'll be doing all of these, these different things, um, shaping your game in all of these different ways to make a truly like multimedia final project. Um, so this is just a quick overview of all of the parts 
um, game design, which you'll be doing a little bit here um, and then a lot more next week, is making decisions about what your game is going to be and what er, and what it isn't. Um, and important, communicating those decisions. Not, we'll, we'll talk more about this. I'm a game designer, so I could like just talk for two hours about this, but I shouldn't right now. Um, and then visual art is communicating visually through visual art, um, through animation and concept art and environmental art um, with the player, both for story and for gameplay. So communicating what the player needs to know to get the full emotional experience, but also what the player needs to know to successfully navigate those, uh, those obstacles, those challenges that you've set up. Um, and then we have computer science, which is actually building the darn thing. Programming all of those interactions, um, preparing for, for, I don't know, player-based contingencies, testing it, making sure your game runs smoothly, making sure the actual experience of playing it is what you had designed. Um, and then audio, which is enhancing, augmenting all of the story, all of the gameplay with audio communication, like on top of the visual, um, really adding that level of immersion. So all of these, yeah, in this series, you're gonna get a chance to try out all of these different roles. Um, I will say right now, there will naturally be some that you may gravitate more than others. I am a game designer. I, I don't like doing audio. It's a mystery. I like playing games with good audio, but it's, 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 it, it mystifies me. It's impenetrable. Um, but obviously, that's, not, that's just me. So by getting a chance to do all of these, you'll kind of figure out what you like, what you don't like, where you really want to spend your time and energy, what really compels you. Um, and we ask that you give all of these the good old college try, um, but there will naturally be some of them that you gravitate more to towards than others, and that's okay. Just, just try. Um, and then we have the secret fifth discipline, that is production. Um, and this isn't one that you'll be doing. This is one that we'll be kind of handling for you. But it's important to note um, in the beginning because. I don't know, it's really important to think about. And um, it, if you become a game developer professionally, uh, you will have a producer. And a producer is someone that handles all of the administrative stuff, that helps bring all of these disparate elements together, um, that makes sure you have all of the things you need, that you have a schedule, that you have concrete, uh, concrete due dates and stuff. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about this at the end, but we'll be handling production. So you guys are the developers, we're the producers for the sake of these lessons. Which brings us to the series overview, which is the schedule. So you are here, Intro to Game Development 1111, um, and this is the series of lectures that you'll be going through. So next week is Game Design and Narrative, um, and then a few weeks after that is Visual Design, um, a week after that is computer science for games, then we have, after a few weeks, audio, and then at the end there will be a launch and game festival. Woohoo! You will have a finished game by that date, or a finished vertical slice, or something that is complete enough that you feel happy showing it off, that you feel like you have a complete overview of the game development experience. Um, so we'll be taking you through all of these different parts. You'll get in-depth lectures, you'll have assignments. Ooh, assignments, exciting. Um, and yeah, that's what this series looks like. Welcome, buckle up. Um, are there any questions? I'm sure there's a lot of questions, but any specific questions about the, uh, the schedule? Emily, yes, uh, so th uh, this is Sayan. Uh, so there's a lot to cover. Um, what about what happens if one of the student misses a class? Um, how far would they fall behind? And what does that look like for them, basically? So if you miss it, it depends on which class you miss. Um, we, if, if at all possible, it would be really great for you not to miss a class um, because they're all really important and they all kind of tie into each other. We'll talk a little bit about that um, at the end when we show you the, uh, the timeline. Um, but if you do miss a class, it's not the end of the world. We will probably make all of our PowerPoints and all of our supplemental materials available on the Google Classroom so that you can kind of catch up and fill them in. Um, 
our supplemental materials are pretty easy to like fill out and extrapolate. You just won't get like the face-to-face -face lecture time. Um, and so that element of your game may not be as fleshed out as some of the other elements, um, but there's a lot of elements. So there's a lot of other things to put your time to. So don't, don't feel, don't despair if you have to miss a class, but if you can, we think we're putting together some really good lectures. So please try and get to them. Um, and what, also, what about, we're going to share our uh, sorry, what library about, email. Um, and you can always, I'm sorry? Oh, go, go ahead, Gabe. Uh, we're going to be sharing, yeah, we're going to be sharing our email at the end of the class. And you can always ask us questions. We're more than happy to catch you up. Um, so, like, yeah, so please, outside of this, we work for the library and we would love to keep in contact with you if you need help outside of these lessons as well. Yeah, we love making games. We love helping people make games. We are super jazzed. We're here for you. We want you to, to be the very best, to do, to fulfill your, your game development dreams. And we are here for that. So yeah, you can always reach out if you have to miss. All right, so enough about that. Let's, let's get back to talking about video games. What can a game be about? Games can be about exploring a dungeon, like good old Legend of Zelda. Games can be about fighting your way through a dungeon or a gungeon, and welcome to the gungeon or enter the gungeon. Games can be about dancing your way through a dungeon, like in Crypt of the Necrodancer. Games can be about battling your friends for control of the dungeon, like in Crawl. There's a lot of dungeons involved, but there don't have to be dungeons. Games can be about battling illness, like in Hyper Light Drifter, or about building a community, like in Stardew Valley. Games can be about controlling a community, like in Papers, Please, or about experiencing the passage of time, like in Passage. Games can be about changing the rules, like Baba is You, or about changing your mind, like an Undertale. What will your game be about? What kind of stories do you want to tell? It's an open-ended question. This is obviously a game development course, but this is also, this whole program in general is kind of a, a creative exploration. You're all budding artists, and this is the question that you may have started asking yourself. What kind of art do I want to make? What, what, like, what compels me creatively? And obviously this isn't something you have to have an answer to right now. Um, I don't know if it's something that you will ever have an answer to as your you journey as an artist, but it's something worth considering. Obviously, this workshop is going to be about a lot of the technical aspects of game dev. Um, it's going to be about game loops and conditional statements and tile maps and stuff like that. But it's also a creative exploration. Um, and especially because this is a long course. These are 12 lessons. You're going to be sitting with this project until January. You want to make sure that the idea is compelling enough um, to carry you through. So. We're going to start a discussion. I'm going to stop my screen share, or maybe I'll keep screen sharing, but I'm going to stop presenting. And we're going to go to the Google Classroom. And there is a document that's what stories do you want to tell? I'm going to have everyone open it up. And let me know if anyone's having trouble opening it. I posted it on the chat as well. So you can click on the link in the chat and we'll take you to the same Jamboard. Oh, there we go. I see people on there. There we go. So this is Jamboard. Um, it's a pretty cool tool, especially for like group ideation. Um, everything you post on here is anonymous, so we can't see who is putting it. Um, I'm actually going to stop my share because I want to post some stuff on here anonymously. Um, and we're just going to go there and take five minutes to say what kind of stories we want to tell. Can um, use the post-it tool on the side. It's the little one that looks like a sticky note beneath the cursor, and just start putting stuff on there.
you can arrange them as you want. And we'll just have this nice little repository. Is, is anyone lost? If you're lost, you can raise your yeah, hand. Yeah, if anyone's having trouble, let me know. Oh, I'll start a five minute timer and then we'll see how we go. I'm loving seeing all of these. Somebody posted a hero's journey. Yeah, that's cool. Which I love. Positive story. Love all the sci-fi fantasy after my own heart. I'm a big, big fantasy person, so super excited. Starting down, but building your way up. I love how specific some of these are getting. When we, when we came up with this exercise, we envisioned like everyone would just do adjectives, but I'm really liking the specifics of these. Taking care of something, I like that. Like something somewhat chaotic, but makes sense. I like how the 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 text of something somewhat chaotic but makes sense is cha somewhat chaotic but makes sense. That's very uh very meta. All right, let's give it another ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Cool. And you can keep adding to this as I talk, but we'll move on. This is a really good variety of stories. These are all kinds of different themes, different genres, different plots, different types of character, different moods different tones. Um, it's a really wide berth and that kind of speaks to the diversity of the stories we tell, um, not just in the traditional sense of diversity, but so, like if you look to all those games we listed, some of them were really deep, like powerful, like personal stuff, but also some of them were really like lighthearted, goofy, silly. Um, some of them were really like heavy, I don't know, some of them were really uplifting. Some of them were more focused on the visual. Some of them were more focused on the writing. I remember being in your shoes as a high schooler and feeling like I had to write the great next American or the next great American novel, and like everything I did had to be like super meaningful and super poignant. If anyone's ever going to take me seriously, but look at all of the different types of stories you want to do. It doesn't have to be deep. It doesn't have to be frivolous. It can be very personal. It can be very weird. Just whatever, whatever is compelling to you is the type of story that you can tell. Other point, this is, this is probably the first game a lot of you are making. Hopefully, with any luck, it will not be the last. Um, so you don't have to put everything in this game. It doesn't have to be your magnum opus. It doesn't have to mean the world to you. It can just be one silly little fun, off, like one off learning game. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, so get rid of that right now. This is just the first game. It doesn't have to, to mean the world to you. Um, that said, there is a second page to this jam board. I want to do one more. Um, Games have meaning, stories have meaning, whether or not we intend them to or not. Um, and one thing we'll talk about in the narrative section of the next lesson is how to harness that meaning. Um, what do you want your players to feel when they're playing this game? Let's take another two minutes, three minutes, and do the same thing. 
And a good way to start this is what do you like to feel when you play games? Do you like to feel relaxed? Do you like to feel competitive? Um, do you like to feel curious? Do you like to feel fulfilled? Gosh, you guys are so good. We've been teaching like seventh graders for like the past month and a half and like it's a pulling teeth getting them to do anything. So it's an absolute pleasure <laughs> having you guys just put your ideas down without much prompting. So if we seem like overly like gung ho on you about doing stuff, that's only because we're used to seventh graders. <laughs> Who are wonderful, but. Oh, but love, I love love. And as you're, as you're putting ideas, you're probably looking at other people's ideas and you're like, wow, that's great. I didn't, why didn't I think of that? Um, and as we'll discuss later, like, you can, you can just take that. You can just be like, oh yeah, that idea is better than mine. I want to use that or I want to do both of them. Um, these will kind of serve as like a repository for uh for us when we get to a certain step all right let's give another 20 seconds want to throw their device console i like that it's a very specific emotion that's me playing hearthstone can't play hearthstone makes i've had angry. that <laughs> Hearthstone, which is a game that I love, but I can't play it because it makes me too upset. All right. Yeah, so let's look. So we've got feeling accomplishment, feeling thrilled, excited, frustrated, but still having fun, challenged. And then kind of on the other side, we have they want to feel powerful. They want to feel relieved. A lot of these are empowered, which I really like. Feel satisfied, feel, uh, feel inspired. I like melancholy. That's interesting. Yeah, we have... Again, a huge range of emotions here. We have a huge range of things they want to feel, a huge range of like, I don't know, yeah, feelings. It's great. Our games can be about all kinds of things. Our games, there's, there's room out there for whatever kind of game you want to make. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Please. Oh, yes. Let's talk a little bit about lens. Um, so I have an English degree. So I'm an English major, so I'm, I'm super excited to get to sneak some English education into this. Um, but the idea of lens, oh, do we have a hand raised? No, that was a clap for oh, okay. English. I think it's so important to learn English and <laughs> Yeah, yeah, all the grammars and writing Just and everything. Yeah, critical thinking, media analysis. Yeah, this is this is a secret. Haha, <laughs> suckers, you all fell for it. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you English. This English class. Um, but no, we're gonna talk about. We all have our own lens, and lens obviously like you can think of contact lens or glasses or like a telescope. But in the broader metaphorical sense, it's just the way you see the world, the perspective that you are looking through. Um, all stories are personal, I believe, at least. No empirical evidence for that, but um, I'll, you can't help but reflect yourself in the art that create, you create, in the stories that you write. Um, so why not embrace it? Why not look to, I don't know, look to the ways that you reflect yourself into, uh, into the art that you're making. Look to the ways that your story is written through your lens, through own, your own perspective your own, I don't know, unique experience. Um, so that's something to be thinking about while you're making this, especially as we go through the ideation process. What is your lens? What is the story that you're, t what are the personal elements of the story that you're creating? Um, what do you bring to this? What's unique about you that you can put into your art? Um, and again, this doesn't have to be anything super deep and personal. 
it can just be I like elves so I'm gonna put elves in all of my art that's me um, it can just be that and then you can dig into the deepness of why you like elves but for now just just I don't know yeah make it personal um, lens is also gonna be our prompt by the way so keep that in mind um, but we'll get into that in just a second so now that we're all loose we're all we're all thinking about our games um, we're gonna do a fun little exercise that I like to call Palace of the Mind. And it's gonna feel a little goofy, but bear with me because it's actually a lot of fun. Um, so we're gonna do a little exercise called Palace of the Mind as a way to loosen up our brains and start ideating. So for now, I want everyone to turn off your cameras and close your eyes. I can't see everyone's cameras. Are we all turned off? Cool. Oh, am I just closed? Take a deep breath. Get comfortable in your chair or on the floor, or you can get up and walk around if you need to. We're going to be exploring a place that we create in our minds. You find yourself standing in a dense fog. You can't really see anything beyond, say, three feet in front of you, um, but you still have your other senses. What's the temperature like here? Are you hot, cold? Is there a breeze on your face? What time of day is it? Is it light out or is it dark? Do you smell anything, hear any sounds? Look down. What is the ground made of here? How does it feel beneath your feet? Is it soft, rocky? Is it carpet, concrete, lava? Do you even have feet? What do they look like? Are you wearing shoes? Roller skates, maybe? Are you standing on a hoverboard? Maybe you have hooves, or maybe you're a snake. Or maybe you're doing a handstand and you look down and see your hands. We're going to start moving forward. However you move, walking, crawling, slithering, roller skating. And pay attention to how that movement feels, how fast you're able to go, the type of motions you have to do, and what kind of sounds you make as you move. But as you move forward, the fog starts to clear. And you can see more and more of this place that you're in. Where are you? Is it somewhere familiar? Somewhere made up? Maybe somewhere in between? Are you inside or outside? If you look up, what does the sky look like above you? How does this place feel as you move through it? Is it serene and welcoming? Or maybe foreboding? Or a little dangerous? How much of it can you see at a time? Is it wide open or are you closed in? There's probably some things in this place. Why don't you move over to the thing closest to you and take a look at it. Pick up that thing if you can. It might be too big to pick up, so just put your hands on it. How does it feel in your hands, if you have hands? Is it heavy? Is it rough or smooth? Is it hot? Does it hurt to touch? Or maybe it's cool and soothing. What if you got in real close and smelled it? What if you licked it? What would it taste like? Maybe that's a bad idea, depending on what it is. But you know, this is our imagination. We're going to try and take this thing with us and keep going. Maybe it's small enough to stick in your pocket. Or maybe you have to drag it along behind you but you get the feeling that wherever you're going, it's going to be important to have. So keep moving, pay attention to how the place you're in changes as you get closer to where you need to go. Is there a path that tells you where you're going? Are you just kind of wandering aimlessly? Are there any more of that thing you picked up along the way? Does the mood change or maybe intensify? Does it get more and more gloomy as you go on, or does it lighten up? Does the path narrow or widen? 
At last, your destination comes into view, and it's a door. Now, depending on where you are, it might be a little odd to see a door, but it's all right. And um, yeah, you know where this, this is where you needed to go. And you know that the things you've been collecting will help you unlock this door. But how is it that you know? What sort of elements connect these things, the, the items and the door? Do they look the same? Are they made of the same materials? Is there some kind of obvious keyhole in the door, or maybe less obvious, some kind of hidden compartment? Maybe something's guarding the door and will only let you pass in exchange for the things you've been collecting. As you approach the door, you see a sign hanging on it. And strangely enough, it says the word or the series of words you chose earlier, the type of stories that you want to create. Now, why would it say that? What lies beyond this door that would make someone think of that? You give up your object and push open the door, and that's where we'll stop. Open your eyes, turn on your cameras, take another deep breath. And think about where that door leads. We're gonna take a five minute break. It's 4.50, so I'll have you all go to the bathroom, stretch your legs, um, come back at 4.55, and uh, we'll let our ideas percolate. Use that sketchbook, take notes, write down any ideas you have or sketch them, um, and I'll see you all at uh, 5.55. Cool. I just love hearing the way you read it, Emily. So it's really therapeutic. <laughs> I love Glad. stories. Yeah, they're my like the little preview that you have when you're screen sharing of um of everyone's cameras like stopped halfway through, and I was like, oh god, I hope my Zoom didn't crash, and I'm not just reading to an empty room. <laughs> but yeah, it turned out okay. It was fine. Yeah, sometimes it does feel like that <laughs> teaching online. Did you imagine anything, Seon, in that exercise? I was uh, one of those little water skipper bugs. I love that. Um, water skipper bug. Wow. I, I don't know what it means, but. <laughs> yeah, no, I had I'm sorry, I had stepped away from a little bit. When I came back, I would just got in the middle of, of what oh, she yeah. was saying. Oh. Yeah, you imagine where you're at, um, but. I, I played games before uh, years ago and I, I really enjoyed it immensely, but now it's just, I just find a, a, another area to, to develop, to devote my time to, you know, because it can take a lot of your time, honestly, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to grab more water real quick and mm -hmm. use the break, so I will be right back. So Gabe, maybe in the end, we can take like a, a screenshot of everybody uh, and um, and hopefully everyone can turn their camera on. Oh, that would be great. Oh, that yeah. Way we could, yeah, that way we could promote the uh, social media of the class launching and everything, so. Yeah, yeah I would love that. Oh, somebody has a guinea pig as your image, that's fine.
Hi, I actually have a question about um, the devices we need for the program. Yeah, go for it. Are computers extremely necessary? Because my younger brothers, they have school Chromebooks, so they're like restricted. You can't really go into, we couldn't join the Google Classroom for them because of the laptops that they have. And we have no other um, resources to use for this. Do you think an iPad would work or something? Um, I think an iPad would work. Gabe, that might be a question for Gabe, but we're the program that we're going to be using is Construct, um, which is entirely browser-based. Okay. Um, and we're going to be using that for pretty much everything um, but the music, which is we're using another browser-based program. So you shouldn't have to, like, download anything. Um, Gabe, do you know if Construct works on iPad? Um, I think it does work, but if you're using a school laptop, and you're, it's not letting you log in, um, log in as a guest. Uh, from our experience, the school laptops will let you use the Google Classroom and also the Construct if you're logged in as a guest on your school laptop. Okay, thank you. We'll try that right now, actually. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And so we're going to be going to Construct a little bit at the end of this lesson, but um, yeah, if if you do have issues um we won't be going into it super in depth until i think the third one um so if there are issues we have time to to sort them out and figure out workarounds great thank you mm -hmm. um, all right welcome back everyone so now that we're all we're all loose we're all ideated we're all brimming with inspiration um let's get into making some games so I'll have everyone go to the Google Classroom. And one of those is the game ideation document. And we'll just have it open. So when you open that up, it should make a separate version of it that's just for you. So feel free to type in it, draw on it, print it out, set it on fire, whatever you need to do for your creative process. Um, and Which one again? Um, it's called the Game Ideation Document. LALB Game Ideation Document. This is the first of f four game design documents you're going to be making for, for this. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about what that means and what that is. But, and, and I'll have another opportunity to get that up just before I start presenting. And once you have it open, go ahead and give us a thumbs up or a clap or let us know in the chat. Yeah, say Just yes or no. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Oh, it's so nice having having people with cameras on. <laughs> the other classes we teach, they really don't have cameras, and it's so nice to like see faces. <laughs> so thank you all for that. Um, is anyone having trouble getting it open? Say yes in there. Say so in the I chat. I kind of forgot what I was supposed to open. Um, it is in the Google Classroom in the classwork section. Um, it is the game ideation document. And it's a Google slide. Yeah, which is a little weird, but we've found that it's the best tool for this. Okay, um, yeah, I got it. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. All right. Let's get into it. Me screen share. All right, so like I said earlier, this is game design part one. Um, this is the ideation phase. Um, this is where we'll get our game concept on paper. We'll have a direction for what we want to make. Um, game design is technically next week and we'll be diving a lot more into the nitty gritty then, but you have to have an actual idea to design. So um, this is just ideating, learning some of the basics. Um, speaking of basics, one of the most important concepts in game development is scope. And that is the size and complexity of your game. Um, so a game like Skyrim, really big scope really big size, really big complexity. Um, but even games that aren't like super enormous have a pretty big scope. Um, I might think, gosh, what's a good example? Um, oh, I should have thought of an example for this. I don't know, a game like Mario, like OG Super Mario. 
um, you might think like, oh, well, that's pretty simple. You're just side scrolling. You're just jumping. It's 8-bit. But the amount of items, the amount of interactions, the amount of levels all create a pretty big scope. Um, so for our game, we're going to want to keep our scope extremely teeny tiny, super small, like small enough that it feels restrictive. Um, but the less there is to work on, the more, the less things you have, um, the, the less complicated it is and the more like energy and time and polish you can pour into those little things. And especially because this is our first game for most of us, um, there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve and we don't have as much time as, as we think. So we really want to give you guys the opportunity to dig into the details and keep our scope small. Um, what that means is we have these parameters. So this is going to be the game we're making. It's going to be one level. It's going to be top down. And what that means is like a lot of the examples that we showed in the what is the game about. Um, it's, it's, it's not side scrolling. It's you're looking at it top down, maybe, maybe three quarters. We'll talk about that more in the art section. Um, I think like Legend of Zelda, eight directional movement. Um, it's going to be pixel art. You guys are going to learn pixel art. That's exciting. Super excited. We have a great artist to here to teach you guys a lot about pixel art. Um, we've taught it before. It's really easy to pick up, but there's a surprising amount of depth you can do with it. Um, it's going to be single player. Multiplayer exponentially increases uh, the difficulty. So just one player. Um, and our mechanics, you're going to be able to move around, you're going to be able to collect items, and you're going to be able to unlock a door. There will be a goal at the end that you have to collect items to achieve. Um, and then we wanted to give you guys this theme of lens just to focus it down. You don't, if you have an idea that doesn't necessarily attach to this, you can, you can do your own idea. But um, just to give you a starting point, a lot of game jams will start with like a theme or they'll all be around a central one. So we kind of structured it that way. Um, and obviously this can be as, as literal or as figurative as you want. If you're doing something very personal, that could be your lens. Or if you're doing something about, I don't know, collecting contact lenses, that could be lens. So there's, there's variety in it, but it's just something to focus you a little bit. Um, and all of this, don't feel the need to write this down. This will all be baked into all of our documents and stuff, but just to give you an idea of how to focus your ideas um, down into an actual manageable game. Um, so the secret dark, or not secret, the, the, the evil dark side of scope is the idea of feature creep. Um, and that is the tendency for a designer, which you all are now, to say, oh, but this idea that I had is so cool and so awesome and it wouldn't be so hard to implement and I'll just, it'll take like five minutes and it won't be that hard and you build it in the game and this happens again and again and again until the game that you're making becomes an unmanageable behemoth of a game. Um, which happens, happens in games, happens in probably every creative project you've ever attempted. Like you just get ideas and you get inspired and you want to add all of these things to it. But for our timetable and for our scope, it's really important that we just stick straight to the core of our idea. Um, so how I like to deal with feature creep is if I get a good idea, I just write it down in like a separate document or something like that. And once I finish my base product, I can go and implement some of those ideas. Um, so, earlier I said that game design is making decisions about what your game should be and communicating those decisions. We're going to be making decisions. We've already maybe made some decisions, um, but the communicating is a big thing. And the way that we communicate those or write them down, even for ourselves, is the game design document. And that is the, the thing that I had you guys open up. Um, if you weren't here, it's in the folder. It's a Google slide. It's called the game ideation document or something like that. And we'll explain why a little bit next lesson. Um, but for now, this is where all of our ideas are going to go. And we're just going to go bit by bit through it. So does everyone have that up? Does anyone not have that up? Say so in the chat or forever hold your peace. Going once. Going twice. Okay. So the first thing on your document you'll see is a title. And not just any title, but 
for now, my game is called blank. And I want you guys to fill that out right now. And the, the for now part is pretty important because this is a working document. It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Your working title could be my game or baby's first game. I have a lot of baby's first games in my unfinished games folder, um, but just give it a title, give it a name. And then the second field is what is your game about? Again, put something in there. Doesn't have to be good, just has to be there. And that, that concept of for now is tied into probably, probably the most important part of game development. Scope is the second most important part, but this next thing, iteration, is the number one idea in all of game development. You will be constantly iterating. Um, probably all of like creative expression, I would say, in general. Um, and iteration is just a fancy way of saying Trial and error. You try out an idea, you see what works and what doesn't, you change your idea based on your findings, and then you try out your new idea. And that's it. And so when we put stuff in our game design document, when we decide a working title, when we decide a working summary of our game, which is what your My Game is About section is, um, this all can change. Nothing is set in stone until January 20th when you, when you show us your game. And even then, it's not even that set in stone. Um, you will probably change your ideas. You, you should change your ideas. Your ideas will evolve as you start building them, as you start doing art, as you start programming them. And that's good and that's natural. And what that means is that you shouldn't be afraid of just putting stuff down there, getting something so that you can get quickly to the trying out phase, to the seeing what works and make your idea better. All right. So I'm going to give you one minute to fill out a working title and a my game is about. And the game is about can be as small as like my game is about a squirrel or it can be a five paragraph essay if you so choose. Just whatever, whatever story you have in your heart, put that in there. Starting now. One minute. Are you putting this into like a Google Doc or a... It is um, the game design, what is it called? The game ideation document in the, um, in the, uh, the Google Classroom. We'll have spaces to fill out all of these questions. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no worries. But good thinking ahead. Yeah, um, did anybody uh, need help accessing the Google Classroom or that file? We can show you where it is. It should make a separate copy for all of you, so you can just download it. But yeah, if anyone is unable to access that, let us know now. And it is a PowerPoint, which I know is a little bit weird, but it, it, it turns out that it's the best format for this. You said it's the game ideation document, right? Yep. Okay, thank you. No worries. And I'll give you 30 more seconds to fill these out. And again, as you're filling out the rest of it, if some new idea comes and you think of a better idea, like you can change it. This is fluid. Slide is a bit small. How do I zoom in? There should be a little like plus or like a little magnifying glass in one of the toolbars um, or control plus. Gabe on it with the hotkeys. All right, let's take 10 more seconds. Nine. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I always have a stopwatch with me when I'm doing these because I can talk for a million years and I have to keep myself on track. All right. So the next thing on there is something called a design pillar. Um, now, what does that mean? These are a lot like the words that you put into that Jamboard. And in fact, the Jamboard is a good repository of ideas for design pillars, both the ones that you put in there, but also the ones that your peers put in there. Um, and what I like to think of when I think of design pillars is they're like a lighthouse. These are the core things that I want this game to be. This is how I want this game to feel. This is the story I wanna tell. This is the theme. 
this is the meaning that I want to impart in my player. Um, and I like to just do three words. So I think in the document it's separated one that's like how I want my game to feel and then two other design pillars um, or the kind of story I want to tell and I want to do design pillars, but three words um, or short phrases. And yeah, I like to think of these as a beacon or a lighthouse so that when you are adrift in the seas of game development and you have done six iterations on your animation and you can't tell what's good and bad anymore and it's three in the morning and you just want to never make games again, you can look to your design pillars and be like, okay, which is the most, I don't know, curious, which is the most challenging, which is the most, what were some of the other good words on that Jamboard? I don't know, I'll use one for my, which is, yeah. So these, this is kind of your guiding things about what you want your game to be. Um, does that make sense? And again, you can change these. These are kind of like the bedrock of your game, but you can always say like, if you have a better idea, or if the game that you make turns out to not fit these pillars, but you really like the game that you make, you can change these. So let's take a minute, two minutes, fill these out. And if you're lost, you can look at the Jamboard. But also, keep filling them out. I'm just going to ramble because that's what I do. Um, I like to do, if, if you want like to really get into it, to really have like a method for it, I like to pick some that are more focused on gameplay and some that are more focused on story. Um, so like if you want your, your game to be challenging, like that could be like thematically challenging or mechanically challenging. Um, or you want like your game to be hopeful or something like that. That's more about like the story and about like maybe the art, but like consider you want it to be hopeful and like mechanically challenging or hopeful and like relaxing to play. I don't know, just think of the different elements of game design. But obviously we haven't really talked about the different elements of game design yet because that's the next lecture. So we can always revise these as we go. Um, but also if you find yourself thinking of a bunch of ones that pertain to narrative, like maybe that's just a clue that you really like narrative. Um, or if you find like a bunch that pertain to mechanics, like you want it to be hard and skill-based and um, rhythm game or something like that. Um, but probably don't make rhythm games for this, but maybe, I don't know, challenge mode. Um, but yeah, if you find a bunch of mechanical words, that might signal to you that you like the mechanical design part more, and that's also perfectly fine. Anyway. Ten more seconds. All right, and so we're done with the first page of our game design document. That's great, we did it. And again, these might not stay the same, but they might not be set in stone, um, but we have it and we're here and there's something on the page for us to iterate on um, as we continue to build our game. So the next page is influences. And I really like this one. What stories inspire me? Um, now note that this has stories. Well, no, the first one, well, this has stories. The first one on your design document says games. Um, and there is room to put other stories that inspire you, but I like to specifically focus on other games. Um, just because it's good to, to play games. It's good to see what other artists are doing, um, what the trends are in the medium that you're, you're making. So we're going to put a game that inspires us and, and specifically a game that inspires this game that we're trying to make. Um, I don't know, could be, could be a game you really like, could be a new one, could be one that like maybe you've just watched like Let's Plays of. Um, and there's different elements of inspiring. It could be something like, uh, yeah, you have the, what do I want to emulate? Where do I want to diverge? So maybe you really like the gameplay of Breath of the Wild, um, but you want to set it in space instead of in like fantasy world. That's 
perfectly fine. Or maybe you really like, um, what's another game? Yeah, try and try and be specific. There's which elements do you want to, yeah, which elements do you want to emulate? Because if you just say, I'm inspired by Animal Crossing, what does that mean? That's a big game with a bunch of different parts to it. Um, but if you say, I'm inspired by the, the cottage core aesthetic of Animal Crossing, well, that's something to emulate. That's something good. Now you kind of know where you want your game to be. Um, and then at the bottom, it says two other stories. So these can also be other games. Um, but we, as artists, we get our inspiration from everywhere else. So you can you can put all kinds of stuff here. Maybe you like really like movies. Maybe you really like the setting of like a Studio Ghibli movie or something like that. And you want, that's your inspiration. Um, or maybe you read a really good book that has a lot of like cool sword fights in it. And that's your inspiration. So let's do two minutes and fill out our influences. And again, it doesn't have to be set in stone. You can always change it. If you are building your game and you're finding that it is nothing like your influence, but it ends up trending towards this other game, then that's perfectly fine. Or if it's like only like that game in like a really oblique way, like that's also totally fine. If it makes you feel the same way, but like on the surface, there's nothing like it, that's cool. And that's something I should have mentioned at the beginning but I'm a little over, all over the place, so I appreciate your patience. But this document is for you. No one who plays your game is going to see this. It doesn't have to be polished. It doesn't have to be in complete sentences. It just has to be a way for you to communicate with yourself, for you to write your ideas down so that you can reference it later, so that when you're two in the morning and you're three iterations deep on your animation, you remember what you were thinking two months ago. This is you communicating with yourself and fleshing out your ideas, making them concrete. Another note, keep filling this out, but I'm going to keep rambling. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, this is my design process. This may not be your design process. If you're sitting here and you're like, this sucks, this is terrible, I don't want to fill this out, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, I hope you're not thinking that, but it happens. So don't sit here thinking like, man, I don't want to fill out this design document. Does that mean I'll never be a game designer? No, that just means that you will have your own process. Um, I ask that you try and go through it because I think it's pretty good. We've put a lot of work through it. But if, if it's really just not for you, if there's a question that you really just can't answer um, or you're really hitting a mental block, just skip it. It's fine. All right. Ten more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. So now we've got kind of our game overview. Hopefully, um, hopefully it's kind of crystallizing in our head a little bit. Um, what what we want our game to feel like, what we want it. But, but now let's get into the story. Um, you all have had English classes. You know the elements of the story. You are all familiar with character and plot and setting. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how they influence games. And only a little bit because, again, we have a narrative lecture next week and we'll get more into it. Um, so generally, when you talk about these elements, you start with maybe character or plot. But for games, I like to start with setting because, again, they're interactive. Um, and in the games we're going to be making, in most games, the thing you're interacting with most is the setting, is the world itself. Um, and so, oh gosh, sorry, I don't have a thing open that I need to have open. It's fine. Um, yeah, so we're going to think a little bit about where and when our game is going to be placed. And then we're also going to think about how it feels to move through. So we were thinking back to uh, to Palace of the Mind. A lot of a lot of that was exploring a setting, and obviously it was like, what physically is our setting? Is it a forest? Is it a house? But it was also how close in is it? 
How, how, how does it feel? What does the ground feel like beneath our feet? Is it hot? Is it cold? Um, that kind of thing. Uh, so any of those little details that you can put in will be clues. And obviously we'll be explicating this more as we talk about uh, environmental design. But for now, just any of those, those tidbits you can put in. Um, and the other thing is influences in setting. Is this a real world place? Um, is it, are there any like fictional places that inspire you? One thing that you can do for this section is uh, if there's any, um, any pictures of places of maybe forests, go on Pinterest, find some stuff. All right, 10 more seconds to fill out setting. Five, four, three, two, one. Um, I just wanted to add one thing. Um, oh, yeah. The Google, the slides, you can add images there too, if that helps you in ideating. If you need to find an image, you can put it in there. Okay? Yeah, totally. Any inspiration that you can give yourself um, is really helpful and will be a jump start on the, uh, the art section. So character, who are we playing as? Um, who are they? What do they want? And what is standing in their way? Um, this is often framed in English classes and the like as the character motivation, what's their want versus their need. Um, but you'll also notice that it's very similar to that chart that we showed at the beginning, the obstacle and the challenge. And that can be a really powerful thing in game. If your character's goals, what they want, um, and what's standing in their way, their challenges, are in line with the player's goals and challenges, then that automatically creates a connection between the character and the player. Um, and just kind of makes everything more immersive, makes it more personal. If the character wants the same things that the player wants. Let's give another one minute to fill out who is your character. And then for them, who are they? Like, that can just be like, they're a cat. I don't know. They're my neighbor. They're an elf. Or it can be a 12-page biography, if that is your jam, if you're that kind of person. And since we started with setting, you can think of who would be in this space. Or maybe it's someone that's unlikely to be in that space and that's what the conflict is. They're trying to get out of that space. Ten seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. And then the last kind of story element is plot. Um, and between character and setting, we probably have at least a little bit of a plot. Generally, plot is driven by the character's wants and needs. So in that, that middle part, that um, what's keeping them from getting what they want, that's, that's a good source of conflict. Um, and tying that to the setting, why are they here? How do they get out or where are they going? There, you have plot, you have conflict. Um, a lot of times plot is thought of as beginning, middle, and end. Um, but I kind of like, well, I like to think of it by, like that, but also, where does my story start? And where does my story end? We have just one level, we have a beginning, and you have a goal that you're trying to unlock to. What is the, what are those two things? And then what is the change that happens in between? So I'll do 30 more seconds to answer this one. And again, as you're, as you're building this game, this may change, but it's good to have this as a starting point. Five, four, three, two, one. So that's a story. We have 
the beginnings of a story for a game. We have the basis for this. Um, we have what we want our game to feel like. We have some influences to look to if we lose our way. And the last page is mechanics, um, which is something that's really game specific. And this is where we get into those decisions that the player is going to make, um, the ways that they'll navigate their, uh, the challenges. So what is a mechanic? Or would anyone like to give me an example of a mechanic? Uh, Erica has her hand up. Yeah, say uh, it, type it in chat. A mechanic is someone that fixes stuff, like for example, a car mechanic. That is a really great answer, and that's an answer I should have foreseen, but that is not the way that we talk about mechanics in games. But I really like that. If I was smarter, I would find a me metaphorical way to link that, those kind of mechanics. Well, you know what? No, so mechanics like are, are the working parts of it, or people who work with the parts of it. In games, mechanics refer to kind of the, the working bits in a game. They refer to the physical things, um, the, the, the things that a player can do to interact with your game. So like the, the ways that they can touch the parts, I guess, and make, make your game work. Um, so like jumping is a mechanic. Shooting is a mechanic. Climbing is a mechanic. Um, all of these ways in which your players are challenged, all of the ways that they have to make decisions. Um, so in our games, we have, th and again, we'll talk more about this and what this means in the next one. But in our games, we have three mechanics. Um, our player can move, our player can collect things, and our player has a goal that they have to unlock. So for the mechanic section, we're gonna decide what those are. So how do they move? How do they, do they walk? Do they fly? Do they roller skate? How do they move in a way that's interesting and challenging? And they can walk if you want. That doesn't have to be the focus of it, but if they're just a person, they might just walk and that might be fine. But that's a mechanic, is them being able to move around the, the playing field or the, the level. And then they're collecting something. What are they collecting? Could be money, could be acorns. If you think back to our Palace of the Mind, maybe the object you found was big and you had to like drag it along behind you. That's a collection mechanic. You have something that you're taking with you. What is that thing? How do you store it? Um, how many of it do you have to collect? And then what is your goal? What are you trying to do? What's that door at the end that you're trying to unlock? So I'll give you one more minute. And again, next, um, next lesson, we're going to be figuring out how to actually like implement these things. But for now, we just need the idea. So we'll take one more minute to fill all these out. And then we'll actually get into making some games. Let's do 20 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so with that, we should all have a pretty complete game ideation document filled out. Um, if there was any that you missed, that's totally fine. Um, you will have a week to finish this and we'll talk more about that in a second. Um, but for now, now that our minds are kind of on mechanics, we're going to get into construct. Gabe, would you take it away? You're muted. Okay. Yeah. So um, before we go on to construct, so, so we're going to give you a taste of the game engine that we're going to be using today or for the rest of this workshop. Um, but before we do so, I want you to go into the Google Classroom and I want you to download a file that is in the 
It's called Game Construct Game Template. So go to the classwork, find the Construct Game Template, and you're going to download the game template.c3p. So go ahead and download that now. And I will also, once you download that, I have posted on the chat the link to Construct, which is the game engine that we will be using. Okay. Once you've downloaded the file, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you're having issues, please let me know. How do you download it? So it looks like it's a compressed file, or is it just one individual? It's one individual file. So um, you can click. OK, it might be a little trickier. I'll, I'm going to screen share really quick, just so you can all see. Oh, I think there's a three thing at the bottom. It says unzip it. OK, can you all see my screen? So I am in Intro to Game Development, and I went to the Construct Game Template. And yeah, I can download it, or I can click on it. And I can actually go to, um, yeah, actually, this is a little trickier than I anticipated. Open a new window. And then it should show me the thing in, yeah, this, there's like a lot of things in there. But just go ahead and click download. And who needs me to do that again? I know there's uh, quite a few steps. Yes, could you do yeah. that again? Yeah. yeah, can you do it again, please? Or you know what? I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this another way. May maybe talk as you're doing it too, Gabe, just in case people's monitored or smaller or lagging. Yeah. And uh, Carlos says free trial, yes. So this is um, a free trial of Construct. Uh, you can, there's a free version that is online. It's not like a 30 days thing. It's just, there's a free version online and that's what we're gonna be doing. There's also a paid version if you find that you really love this program and you have the cash to spare, but you absolutely do not need the paid version for this, uh, this thing. Okay, oh, so and there we go. I did one better and I put it in the chat. So everybody go ahead and download the game template.c3p. Yeah, so you shouldn't need a zip extractor. Kayla, uh, you have a question. Have a question? Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I tried to download it, but it said I needed an application to open it. And it wasn't the zip extractor. I know the difference, but okay. uh, do, do I need something to open it? Don't worry about opening it for now. We're going to open it in the engine. Got it. Um, and so for, for those of you who may not, or who are like, what's an engine? Um, I guess that, that gets into like actual mechanics like we were talking about. But um, an engine is a thing that makes a game run. So we're going to be building a bunch of little things in it. We're going to be putting all of, all of the rules, um, putting all of our ideas into it. But it's going to be actually like crunching the numbers behind the scene and making all of our mechanics work. So. There's probably a better explanation than that, but it's the thing that makes it run. The program that we use to build our game in. I guess like like it's Photoshop, but for games. So you do your art in Photoshop and Photoshop does all the fancy computer stuff that makes it run. It's like that for games. Uh, were you all able to download the file? I also put it in the chat. So hopefully you were all able to download it. Uh, and don't worry about opening it. Yeah, just download really it. Opening it up yet. And I also posted a link to construct. If you haven't done that yet, go ahead and click on the link. Um, for this next part, I will be showing this on my screen, but I recommend uh, you do this on your own. I will try to kind of navigate you through where you need to be clicking. And uh, if you get lost, go ahead and look at my screen and you'll see exactly where you need to be. Okay, so some of us can't download it because we're using school Chromebooks. Okay, no worries. Um, if you can't download it today, um, what I recommend for the next time we log into this class is log in as a guest. Uh, we've had some success with the students on school Chromebooks um, to be able to download things and use like programs that they normally couldn't if they log in as a guest, okay? 
But for so, this lesson, we just need you to, we're just going to be showing you around. Um, you don't have to do any action on it. So as long as we can get it up by next lesson, we'll be, we'll be fine. So if you weren't able to download it, you can go ahead and look at my screen. But for those of you who were able to download the game template, um, what I want you to do next is go on to construct.net. And I'm going to do the same. Make sure to screen share. Yeah, there you go. OK. So once you're on construct.net, it's going to, you're going to see a red button that says try it now. That's uh, towards the left. There's also one that says try now in the top bar. I want you to click any one of those. I'm going to click the red button that says try it now. It's yelling at me. Okay. Once you do that, there's a big green button on the lower left that says launch now. So I'm going to click on that. And then you're going to see a flying pig. And OK, so we are in this launch window for construct. And what I want you to do is the first thing I want you to do is click on, for those of you who downloaded the file, go ahead and click on file. And then I want you to open up your, the game template that you've downloaded. So you might need to look into your downloads folder or your desktop. If you're on a Chromebook, uh, there should be a downloads folder that these go into. And for those of you who weren't able to download the file, go ahead and click on new project. The big button says new project and you'll still be able to do some cool stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna do file, game template and open. And if for some reason I'm going too fast, just let me know and I can slow down or backtrack. All right, so my file should be opening. And once you open it, you're gonna see just a few shapes on your screen. Uh, we'll get to those in a little bit. Uh, but before we talk about that, let's, let's talk about what we're seeing here. So this is the user interface for Construct. And again, like Emily was saying, Construct is a, a game engine, so you can make games in here. Uh, other game engines you might be familiar with are Unity, Unreal. There's some other ones like a text-based uh, game maker called Twine. I don't know if I, you can consider that a game engine, but another one is uh, Bitsy, which we also teach, so you can make really fun little uh, sprite-based, pixel-based games. It's really, really neat. Uh, but this is Construct 3, and let's look around. So if I look at the very, let's look at the very left over here. So you'll see a bar and it's called Properties. So Properties shows you the properties of anything that you have selected at any Excuse given me. time, right? Yeah. Um, my computer, you have a like, yeah, my computer lagged. So I, I'm confused at where you're at. Okay, no worries. Um, were you able to open up Construct? Yeah. Okay. Um, what you're gonna do uh, is you're gonna click on Try Now once you get to okay. that main page. And then once you get to the next page, there's a green button at the bottom left that says Launch. Okay. Okay. And were you able to download the, the file, the game template file? No. Okay, that's okay. You're gonna click on new, new project. You're gonna find that button, click on that, and then you should see what I'm seeing, minus the shapes on the screen. Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now if you look to the left, this is the properties. And anything that you have selected, it will show the properties of that object. Uh, right now, our layout is selected. So you can see the different, um, you know, you can look at the dimensions, like size, the name of your layout, um, all these different properties. Um, if we look up to the right at the top, we can you see our menu. So we can click on menu and this, you know, 
This has all our menu options. So you can save, you can preview, you can view, you can look at, yeah, your account. So all that stuff that comes with any of these programs. To the right of that, we get some of our kind of like, we have our preview or undo and also a little save button. This main window in the center, this is our main view. So at the moment, we're looking at the layout view. So this is the layout of our game. This is where we're going to be placing all our art. At the moment, we see you know, a couple of shapes. Uh, and for those of you who you know, haven't placed anything here yet or weren't able to open the file, it's going to be blank, but that's OK. Uh, you can also look at my screen once I show you how this game runs. Um, up at the top, so we're currently in layout view. We have a couple of tabs. So you can see one that says layout one. To the right of it, one that says event sheet one. Go ahead and click on event sheet one just so you can look at it real quick. This is where we're gonna be adding all our code. So today, we're not gonna be touching this at all. This is gonna be in a later workshop, but I just wanted to give you a little quick preview. And for the meantime, go ahead and click back on layout one and it'll take you back to this main layout. To the right, we see a bar called project. So the project bar, this basically holds everything that will be our game. All of our assets, all of our tiles, all of our sounds. This, this is basically where you can find those things. Underneath the project, you can see another bar called layers. And mine's a little different. Let me see. So yeah, so you will see one that says layers or layout. And at the moment, there's only one layer on this game. The free version of Construct only gives you two layers, unfortunately, but that's OK. We're going we're gonna to work within those constraints, those limitations. And underneath, some of you might have uh, another tab that says Tile Map. Again, we're not going to do anything with that. I just wanted to show you that it's there. So I want you to click back to the Layers Layout tab. And that's basically the user interface for Construct. So as we go on, as we move forward in this workshop throughout the weeks, uh, we're going to show you more and more how this program works. Uh, and it's actually, it's a really fun program. I love using it for making games and just all kinds of fun interactive things. Um, but if you notice, um, for those of you who weren't able to open up the game template, I want you to go ahead and look at my screen because I'm going to show you how to run your games. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing really quick because it's not going to show in this view. And okay, can you all see my screen okay? Okay. So for those of you who were able to open up the construct file, what I want you to do next is I want you to go up here close to the menu bar and you'll notice a little play button. So this is how you preview your game. And what construct does is it opens up a preview of your working game in, in another window. So at this point, I want you to press play. And so far, this is my game. Now, some things that I haven't, you know, we haven't talked about yet, the triangle to the left actually has a thing called a behavior, which is something that we'll talk about later. But that behavior lets us interact with this object, lets us control it, okay? So go ahead and press up down, left, right, you'll notice that you're able to control that triangle. Now, when I built this, I was mirroring the, the diagram that Emily showed you earlier, uh, where I talked about what is a game. So we have our player. To the right, we have an obstacle. You'll notice that it's a solid. You actually can't go through it. And then to the very right, that uh, yellow circle is our goal. So in order to get in this simple little game, in order to get to the goal, you just gotta go around 
that obstacle or challenge. So our game doesn't do anything right now. You're basically just moving an object, but we, we wanted to show you how Construct works. And as we go on throughout the weeks, we're gonna show you how to implement uh, different mechanics, uh, make this even more interactive and immersive. So now, what I want you to do, so we learned how to open up the file. I'm gonna show you another way if you, if, if you're already in a new project, you can go to the menu on the top left. You can go to project and open. We're not doing this right now because we've already opened one. But what I want you to do now is we're gonna save this template. We're gonna save it and I'm gonna want you to place it into another one of the classwork assignments called my game. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm gonna click on menu, project, save as, and download a copy. And you'll notice here that it says, you can change the name of it. So it just says game template. Uh, what you can do is go ahead and uh, place your name or the name of the game. The, so in the game design document or the ideation document, you also, you might have a working title for your game, correct? So go ahead and put your name first. And the working title of my game is Waterbug. Or that, no, water bugs are, are those the little skippy bugs on top of the water? Aren't that's water it. bugs like roaches, like a type of? Yeah, yeah never mind. That, that sounds We're like iterating. Yeah. Already iterating. Water skipper. There we go. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds much cuter. <laughs> water bug sounds pretty gross. Okay. And then I'm just going to click OK. And what that does is it saves, if I look in my finder, it saves um, that version of the construct file. Okay. And the next thing I want to do um, is for those of you who are able to open this and also save it, I want you to go into the classwork. And under my game, I'm not able to show this on my end, but you should be able to upload your game into here. Okay. And once you upload it, um, go ahead and turn it in. And this is just going to be a place to store your game. Um, you can also, you know, keep it in your computer as well. But we want you to make sure that you're saving these things as you go along. Can and, I see how you named it again? Yeah, of course. Okay, so I went to menu, project, save as download a copy and then here it says game uh, file name it's currently called game template so i can go ahead and change it i put my name and then the name the working title of my game um so uploading it right now or later on um you can upload it right now we want you guys to have this uploaded before next lesson so if you have it ready to upload like it's renamed now then no reason uh you shouldn't do that yes erica so i made the i downloaded it but and i'm trying to like turn it in through the file but it doesn't let me well i can't find it on here Let's see. That part's really hard for us to mirror because we're technically like the the odd the the teacher account and you are all student accounts. Um, so let me. Are you clicking file, but you can't find the file, Erica? Yes, I can't find it. Okay. Um, where is where is it taking you? When um, is it going to your downloads folder or is it going to another place? Oh, it's going to my Google Drive. Okay. Um, okay, so you click the, 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 yeah, there should, oh, can you drag the file in there? Yeah, so if you download it, there should be a tab at the bottom of your computer. Just drag it into where it says um, upload for the Google Drive thing. 
Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you. Kayla. Thanks. Okay, and with that, I think oh. we can. Mm -hmm. So we have one more question. Nathan's asking, do we turn it into game? Is that naming it? Yep. Uh, if it's named and it's the template, turn it into my game. And you'll be able to, um, so this is just making sure it's there. As we move on, as we iterate, as we make into it, you'll be turning it in the different iterations of it. This is just to make sure we all got it down and named. Um, and there was a question, if you weren't able to download it um, to open the file, uh, that's fine not to have it right now. Um, play around with it, try logging in as a guest, um, try noodling some different ways to, uh, to download it, and then try to have it by the end of, or by uh, next lesson, turned in there um, and downloaded and saved with your name. So the, uh, so, sorry, go ahead, Gabe. Uh, for those of you who can't open it, uh, we're going to give you our, the email for the, the library studio. And uh, we want you to submit your questions. We, we wa really want to make sure that you get this working. So we're happy to kind of walk you through this outside of these workshops as well. Okay. So please don't be afraid to do that. Yeah. If you're having trouble, well, we can t troubleshoot you through you it. Do you want to put both your emails in the chat or? Yeah. yeah. All right. So while we're all, we're all working fi on finishing up that. Um, oh, that's not the right thing. There we go. So if we go into the Google Drive after we've turned our game, um, there is another document in there and that is called the LALB Game Dev Student Overview. And so I want everyone to open that up. And we're going to speed run this, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so there's, there's our emails. If you have any issues or questions or comments, please send them. We're always checking them. Um, we'd be happy to hear from you, um, especially if you have any issues. We'll work, we'll work through them. Um, but yeah, so this is basically an overview of the whole darn program. You are almost at the end of lesson one. That's great. We have a game idea and we have the start of a game file. Now, there's a lot of work ahead of us. Um, and that, but that's okay. Uh, so if you scroll all the way down, we, again, are taking the roles of producers. Um, and we've kind of broken down the work. So if you scroll all the way down, it'll show this, um, which is deliverables. And deliverable is a fancy game industry, tech industry term for physical things that you like turn in and you complete. Um, and so if you look over, these are all of the things that you're gonna complete and turn in over the course of this 12 week period. And it might look like a lot and it might be really overwhelming, but if you look at like the top two, the top three, one of those is design overview, which we've already done. Um, and then one of those is to make a construct file, which many of you have already been done. So we're already two down. Um, but still, this is kind of a big overwhelming spreadsheet. So if you scroll up one, there is a timeline here. Um, so this is when all the lectures are, what assignments are gonna be associated with each of the lectures, how it's gonna be broken down, um, when you should kind of be doing these things. Um, and this is going to help you because obviously, like as we've learned, making a game is a big complicated process and it helps to have it broken down into little manageable bite-sized chunks. So we have planned it out so that you won't necessarily, you won't have too much on your plate at a time. Um, it'll all be explained in the lecture. So next lecture, um, I keep saying lecture, lesson workshop is game design. So for that one, I'll be going through what a game loop flow chart means and what a narrative storyboard means and what a level map means. So we'll be going through all of those things and then you'll have three weeks to finish those. Um, and then the next one, art, you'll be going over character environment and object art. Um, and you'll be going through the process of going from concept to asset to animation. And then, um, same with mechanics. So this timeline is going to be just like the plan to keep you on track. Um, and it'll show you what you should be working on when and when they're due. Now, when I say due, like no one's giving you a grade. Um, we're not, we're not your teachers. We're here. We're your fellow artists here to help you organize so that you can make something um, pretty good. So if you have like a big exam 
on the 9th and you know you won't be able to finish stuff in time, that's fine. You can, you can push it to the side. You can say like, well, I'll just take more work um, the next week or something like that. It's not set in stone, it's flexible. Um, but as you can see, there's kind of a lot of work involved in this. And we think that sticking to this timeline is gonna be the best chance at getting something really cool and polished and presentable at the end of it. Um, so stick to the timeline, stick to the list of, of deliverables, list of tasks. Um, if you see they have their associate lesson and they're color coded, so it will tell you what you should be focusing on when. Um, and then it'll say the date that it's assigned the date due, which will correspond to lesson days. Um, and then you'll see how much time you have uh, to work on each one. So with that in mind, and yeah, it's the project management, which is the boring stuff, but the stuff that I really like. Um, and this all has been learned trial by fire. Um, my first game project was really huge and we didn't know any of this stuff and we crashed and burned and it was a great learning experience, but it was not a great game making experience. So right now you're like timeline spreadsheets, this is mega boring, but when you're in it, you may be grateful to have them. So, and then again, those are emails. If you're like really struggling with this, if something's taking like way longer than it should, like let us know. We're here to help. We're your producers. We're here to take care of all the administrative stuff so that you can just focus on the creative stuff. All right. So on that note, your assignments for the week. So finish your design document, um, which is the one that we've been working on, which is the, the ideation document. Um, many of you have already put stuff in. Um, if there's any you left blank or if there's any where you just didn't have the time to fill them out, just fill them out. Um, again, no one's grading you on this. Uh, you don't have to write full sentences. Just complete it to a point where you feel good about it, where you feel like, yes, this is going to be useful for me going forward. Start your construct file. Many of you have already done that. That's where you turn it into my game with a name. Um, if you haven't done that, we'll troubleshoot. Again, email us if you're having trouble downloading it. Uh, try it as guest. Um, just get something submitted there. Get something started. And then this one is do some sketches. We're all, we're all loosey goosey. We've all been ideating. We all have like big dreams of what this game is gonna be. So start channeling that creative energy into something. Um, get out your, note, your sketchbooks and your pencils, start drawing, start taking notes, start making diagrams, however you feel best to express your ideas. Just start, start doing that. Um, and then take pictures of it, put it in your design document, send it to us. We always love to see all of the work that you're doing. Um, and then we'll see you next week for game design to start taking all of these ideas and building them into a thing. Cool. Any questions? Uh, Emily, great job. So let's see, can you stop uh, screen share? I can or was that stop it? sharing. Okay. Yeah, we're done. Um, Sela, do you have a question or set the applause? There is a lot of stuff. I don't know about you guys. I, I didn't follow it because I'm just one, you know, not the left brain type of person. I'm like traditional art stuff that's uh, just uh, pretty easy. But hey, yeah, let's give them a Gabe and Emily a, a applause. Virtual. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, so yeah, does anyone have a question why they're still here? And then uh, we have a few more minutes. I want to I want to cover a couple last things before we head out. I don't see any hands raised. Okay. You can put um, them in the chat or email them to us too. Right. So you have their email. You can send send them questions. Um, so I, I know that was a lot of stuff. And then so as I mentioned earlier in this class, so what you guys put into this classroom, it's gonna get it's what you're gonna get out of it, okay? So as you can see that there's a lot of stuff that you have to do for behind the scene. So you just can't show up here for two hours and expect to get all this, right? I mean, all of these links that they're sending you, you have to go home and perhaps click on it, play with it. And even some of these sketch ideas and what kind of game you want to design, you would have to write that down for yourself. And you know, and, and once you write it out, read it again to see if you understand it the second time. If it, if it doesn't make sense to you, correct it, okay? Um, so, uh, Let's see what else. Um, Selexis, uh, Selexis is here. Um, 
and and Selim is here. Sela is here. Sorry. So hopefully you got to observe and and saw everything. Are you coming back next time, or is this just your only time? No, I'm planning to do the whole like attend the whole course. Awesome. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Sean, did you have a question? Um, sorry about that. It's just I I actually daydreaming and just <laughs> and then I was struggling doing the do the document and mm -hmm. and that's it. Okay, you know that's that. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's totally fine. I I I was I was watching this whole thing. It like I said, I'm honestly confused. But mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload this video onto like a private YouTube. And then that way, for those of you, if you want to skip through it, right, and then you can just go to the part that you missed, you can back up, fast forward, however you want to do it. Does that sound good? Okay, yeah, so I'll do a YouTube uh, private link for this video. Uh, so then that way you all are like, I want to see that again and again, okay? But a lot of times you would probably just have to, if you have technical things, like I, I couldn't download for some reason, I, my file was like a little window that was like empty. Mm -hmm. uh, after I download the chat. So uh, I might have to email you myself. Um, yeah, please. Uh, like when we tell you or ask you to email us, please do. We, we want to know that you're hungry to learn this stuff and that you're willing to take that extra effort to try to figure it out. And we're there. We're going to be there for you along the way to make sure that you succeed in this, okay? So okay, Gabe and Emily, if they email you, do you want them to perhaps take a screenshot or anything to make sure that you get all the picture of how to help solve their problem easier or? Um, screenshots are great if <laughs> it depends on the problem, but yeah, if it's something that you can like screenshot an error message, that would be great. Um, we also like, it may seem like a ton of information at first because it is, but hopefully the rest of them will be a slower kind of like deep dive and we'll really get into it. And again, this is just our process of making games. There's a lot of them out there. So if you find yourself wanting to do something different, that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. um, all we ask is you, you try your best. And you well, one engage. last thing um, in the game design document in the Google Classroom, uh, make sure after you've, you're done filling it okay. out, to press the turn it in button. So this should be like a, a purple button that says turn it in. So make sure to do that. And if you can do that today before you, you, know, you leave or right after you leave, that would be awesome. Okay. And again, if you, I don't know, you're not getting graded. We just really want to see your ideas. Um, we just want to make sure you're with us and make sure that, uh, I don't know, catch any problems before, before they happen. Um, and also, just because you're turning it in doesn't mean that it's finished or final. There's actually an unsubmit button if you ever want to edit it. So keep iterating, but just keep us keep us in the loop. We want to see what you're doing. Yeah, and so uh, as we are finalizing here, if you can present yourself with camera, I want to do like a screenshot so you are, uh, are visible. Um, so if you can turn your camera on, that would be awesome. Um, Carlos, Lupe, Catalina, Michaela, are you there? Thank you. You're all so beautiful. Stop hiding. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. All right. Uh, Catalina, are you there? Or is that the same person? Okay. Catalina well. says her camera doesn't work. Okay. All right. No, no problem. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. Okay. So, um, so you guys, uh, exciting day. Uh, also, uh, a lot of things going on behind the scene. So, Lexus, uh, this is the last lesson that Lexus is going to be here with us. So, she's going to be leaving. Uh, <laughs> next week. Um, so, she won't be here next week for our meeting on Wednesday. So, um, do you want to share where you're going or what are you doing? Sure. Now? Um, I recently got, sorry, with my thing, um, hired full time as a, an accountant. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing but, um, the whole circle back to art after I figure out all about um, Thank you. So my advice to you guys is, um, 
you know, I wish you all the best of luck. Being hard is important. Doing um, more than the average person, and then um, you know, you have a lot of resources. You could research, and kindness is super important. So even if you're like super great, being kind goes farther. So <laughs> thank you for bearing with me with my <laughs> my thing. Um, but yeah, I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Alexis, are you not coming back, or is it like? No, this is. You guys will have another um, program coordinator. Oh, I'm sad. Oh, don't be sad. <laughs> so, I'm still yeah. gonna keep up with you guys and see how your work is. Come, come by and visit us if you like. You know, through observing like here, if you have time. Okay. All right, you guys. So it's thank, thank you, Lexus. Uh, yeah. So she's. Uh, I don't. I know she was a little broken when she. Uh, do her connection but she's going to do accounting full-time and so she is uh wants to dedicate a lot of her energy in that area which she loves and then she said just continue to make art because uh, it's so important and continue to be kind to each other all right you guys uh we are meeting next week again only it's it's back-to-back -back week only because the holiday uh thanksgiving is coming up and we don't want to get too close to that okay so we'll see you next week, Wednesday at same time, 4 p.m. Thank, Thank you guys you. so much. Thank you. Wait to teach you more game development. Bye. Hope everyone's jazzed. See you next week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you guys. See ya. We did it. We did it. Hey, good job. Oh, yep. boy. We did it. That went pretty well. Yeah, I think that went. That was still frozen. <laughs> that came up, um, and uh, and there was a few workarounds, so that was good. So I we're think we're going to continue to kind of deal with those and try to find ways to make sure that nobody gets left behind. Um, again, uh, if you can continue, like share their share our emails with them. Mm -hmm. uh, cause we we really want to make sure that everybody is you know following along as much as possible. And we're going to try to make it as conducive to that as we can. We're pretty used to, to having to do technical workarounds and stuff with this. Uh, so this I, is pretty small, small potatoes as far as. I bet. Uh, Sela, how, how did you, did Alexis invite you or how did you get here? <laughs> yeah, I just reached out um, through the volunteer for UCC because I was interested in volunteering. And so Alexis reached out to me mm, and told okay. me about this game design course. And like my ultimate plan is to actually like teach um, like a web development workshop in the future. So mm -hmm. this is sort of just my like seeing how these are run. I'm not gonna be like interfering at all, just like basically watching y'all because especially this workshop has run amazing. So mm -hmm. great job. Yeah, and also so this I, is just my opportunity to learn what UCC and like living arts is all about. And uh, as we continue to develop, because this is our fourth iteration of this game development stuff, so we're always kind of like asking for for input, feedback, um, and also we want people. We're building this so other people can teach it as well in the future, because uh, we want to share this out like these lesson plans. So we wanna make sure that other people will be able to, to do them also, because uh, we wanna spread the game development love to the world, so, you know. So any, any feedback is, you know, is welcome. You can email us as well if there's any, like, any things that you wanna tell us or, you know, um, more than happy. No, I, like, I love how accessible y'all have made it and just how you broke it down and, um, even the exercises were very accessible, like you didn't make them overwhelming. So I thought, yeah, and all did. Also, if you're interested, so uh, we have another uh, game development workshop that's even like simpler than this one is. Uh, we use a, we teach a game engine called Bitsy. Um, in the future, we're going to be looking, kind of reaching out to people, teachers and people who are interested um, to hold these workshops for them so they can start to, you know, internalize it for themselves and seeing how they can apply it for teaching other people. So if you're interested in that, like email us your, you know, your email, just let us know. Mm -hmm. 
and then we can follow up later uh, with you as well. Yeah, yeah. This is the first time I um, encountered Construct. Like I've attended or like helped out with like scratch courses. Okay. Um, so, but like it Similar. seems like Construct is really cool. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you should you should check out Bitsy. Bitsy is really cool. We've yeah, been we'll Bitsy do. With the uh, Beach Lake Public School District, and it's been really cool. Oh, um, so you guys, you yeah. Any feedback for us, and you can also email us, or if you have anything to tell us right now, um, just kind of what you're thinking about what we've done so far, and if anything that we should kind of tweak as we go forward, or, or if you want to think about it and email us, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to get off uh, on here. So, can you email them, uh, Sela? For feedback? Oh, I think I think we, um, Gabriel asked for your feedback. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I'll let you know. I mean, today was only the first, you know, the first class, and I think the whole thing went great. It was just the, uh, the I, I I don't know if any of the students got lost or anything, and then. Um, and then they were afraid to speak up, you know, because. Um, uh, oh, that's totally, actually, this wasn't as bad as other classes we've had. So th yeah. it, it went pretty well for us. This was very yeah. vocal, which yeah. is great. Good. Um, Good. But that's one of the reasons we have everyone turn everything in. So just so we can like see and make sure they're on the right track and know if we mm -hmm. need to like reach out. So. Also, I don't know if you noticed the jam board and like it was jamming in there. Oh my yes, God, it was, it was. jamming in there. <laughs> So that, that's, uh, that's a really good sign. And then we'll be able to look into the classroom and see, you know, even though people haven't turned it in, we can actually start to see their progress. So that we're going to start using this as a way to measure, um, you know, how the students are doing and how we need to kind of tweak our lesson in order to make sure that everybody's caught, caught up. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. I'm going to jump onto another Zoom. Woo. Yeah. All right. oh, no. Fun. Uh, stay on. I'll probably reach out just maybe it's good to have a one-on-one -on -one just to get to know each other and like, yeah, say okay. a little bit about myself and like what I'm interested in. But yeah, okay. I'll reach out by email. Sounds good. Okay, bye all. Right. all. Good job. Bye. Bye. Thanks guys. Bye Emily.